GIS or Geographic Information System. Uh, we'll learn about this with a perspective of National Resource Management applications in uh, NRM. And the PPT courtesy is from uh, Mr. Wing and Bettinger. So object, our objectives is why GIS uh, use is so prevalent, so widely used GIS is in the field of natural resource management. And uh, the evolution uh, of the development of GIS technology and key figures. Then we'll talk about common spatial data collection techniques and what are the input devices that are available to us and then common JS output processes that are typically meant for natural resource management then few uh, JS software that are available so what is GIS multitude of definitions and applications are possible there are various definitions by Boehm by Borrow various various uh, eminent people have given their different view of GIS. Some say it is a software, some say it is a database, some say it is a decision making. Various uh, GIS um, definitions are there. The best is from SRE. But let us, uh, you know, with this perspective which we, we are talking about today. First GIS is, GIS provides tools for solving specific problems related to spatial data. So whenever you are speaking about GIS, be sure that you talk about spatial data. Because when you're talking about simple data, it is it will be simply a database activity. But while you're talking about spatial data and those functionality which acts upon this spatial data, then it becomes a GIS. Then GIS is uh, an acronym for GIS science. So GIS is actually geographical information science also. So the identification and the study of issues that are related to GIS use affects its implementation and then arise from its application. This was given by Good Child in 1992. So there are various definitions of GIS also that have evolved from specific fields, uses, applications and discipline. So let us see few of them. A GIS minimally consists of a database location information and a digital link between them so you have a database on one hand you have a location information in second hand then there is a linkage between them and you say it is a gis or you may in other words say that a digital connection that tells us where something is and what it is this is again an important gis definition so most gis definitions identify the nature of the geographic or special data in making distinctions from other software programs. So I, as I uh, indicated earlier, that when you are talking about spatial data or geography, then you actually difference yourself from all other database uh, softwares or dealing with that some, some sort of geography, you create difference and then you say this is GIS. For example, just uh, see on the left side, there are a certain name, there are certain length. Okay, these are the name of the rivers and these are the length of the rivers. But now, when I say that we have some numbers, some gauges, some rivers or any other thing has latitude and longitude. This latitude and longitude, you know, it specify and it makes this data into a spatial data and this is a non-spatial data. So applications of GIS, the digital mapping capabilities of GIS, it allows us to examine landscapes in a way that would be impossible or nearly impossible uh, if you use other tools, right? There are bunch of uh, applica application functionalities that are there in GIS. And if you go through ArcGIS, there are so many tutorials available. And if you talk about Quantum GIS, that is a free open tool free open GIS available uh, while ArcGIS is proprietary but but on in proprietary and free open domain they both are the masters they both are having functions that are innumerable, innumerable while quantum GIS has so many of you know options functionality you can add it again and again people are making and you can add it so depending upon your application depending upon your use you have innumerable capabilities. So GIS capabilities that benefit natural resources application 
because we are specifically talking about um, natural resource application, measurement of landscapes or structure, resource mapping, overlaying or integration of multiple layers, maybe vector layer, annotation layer or various layers and then modeling these resources. This is where our GIS power lies that may help in all these opportunities. So let us see a brief history of GIS. Uh, you know, written record of uh, proprietary boundary location date at 1400 BC. The term GIS dates to the 1960s and many associate overlays analysis with modern day GIS. But before I go, I must tell you a story. Uh, there was Dr. John who actually made a GIS of a city uh, in England which was suffering from plague okay there is a specified area where where the deaths were more so he plotted he made a made a um, geographically um, you know at that time may not may, maybe he not be so precise but he made a geographic uh, uh, a place piece of paper geographic lines and said said that okay these are the places where most of the deaths are taking place then he analyzed okay this is the problem there is a there was a hand pump and those people who are uh, drinking water from that hand pump are mostly you know susceptible or they are they are actually dying so he went and he broke the handle of that particular uh, you know hand pump that still is that thing is still lying in uh, uh, street of uh, london so he was actually regarded as one of the pioneers uh, of gis let us get back to the top topic now this is gs gis theme overlay they are they are various um, maps and every map has theme like i am a electronic guy i want my electricity lines uh, or I am a water guy I want some uh, water lines some I am a trafficker or I am a automobile person I want routing algorithm so all these are uh, the various maps are on uh, on account of or on the basis of some themes these are various themes these are stand types hydrology roads topography composite layers you combine them these are th JS theme layer or you can use it them individually so this is overlay analysis history the integration of multiple sources of information as i just uh, indicated and it was demonstrated by dr john snow as i just uh, took his name uh, in his isolation of cholera sources in london this cholera was actually uh, making people die i might have said plague earlier but let us exchange it with cholera now and uh, it was demonstrated again in 1954 by um, by Tewitt town and country planning textbook and 1916 by McHag designed with uh, nature so wouldn't it be great to do this digitally this is the origin of modern day GIS so again in 1960s uh, GIS saw the development of spatial database of land cover from USGS and USNRCS USGS is you know most of the work of GIS and geography is done by USGS and mapping programs begin to appear uh, by th all these you know these name if you are a GIS guy then CIA produces world data bank like coastline major river lines political borders throughout the world and then US Census Bureau produces methods for linking census information to location for the 1970s status this is again the based on respondent addresses so this is again an example of a GIS then Roger Tomlinson came and drives the creation of Canadian Geographical Information System CGIS in 1964 so he was the first person Roger Tomlinson who made a GIS system a foolproof GIS system then came land user natural resources inventory system and then Minnesota land management system these all are the basic building block of today's GIS which are helping us for natural resources and um, their workability and the genesis of ArcGIS this because you know ArcGIS is just not a property software it has changed the way we look at GIS now it, GIS without ArcGIS is not we can think today so it was produced by Harvard University in 1977 and a credited standard uh, Jack 
Dengermond worked on this Odyssey, Archive's Odyssey. So, Arc Info was introduced in 1981. It was again the major GIS venture. Then Map Info came in 1986. The PC uh, concept progresses during the 1980s and became standard during 1990s. So, all these things uh, happened thereby giving us those GIS which are actually available to us. So, those GIS have these roots. So, why GIS and natural resources? The origin of modern GIS are with initial databases that described the natural resource condition. And managing natural resources is not an easy business. It is quite uh, complicated. And GIS is particularly well suited as a mapping and an analytical tool to support, support this ma management decision making. Because Special considerations are paramount for natural resource monitoring and uh, management. So, special considerations, wherever special, special thing comes, you have to look for GIS. These software and hardware elements have brought GIS to the desktop for many natural resources person. Previously, it was difficult, but now everything is on the fast hardware configuration um, you know, performance machines. So, many employees now need to be at least conversant about GIS and related technology. Even in, in you know, even in many countries, GIS is in curriculum. Not personal, but the kids are reading it. So, tech, you have read it. I, I must, I'm sure everyone has read geography. So, you were reading about one part of GIS only. So, technical development, for example, GPS, lidar technology, and you know, high-resolution satellite imagery, that has made special data availability much more affordable and readable than it it was in past. So, educational op opportunities for GIS and related tools training is now widely available. And what about data collection processes and input devices? Technology is constantly moving on the f higher end. So, enhancement in digital technology for measurement applications are quite obvious and frequent. So, the multitude of tools are available for special data capture, but two important data considerations must always be taken into account, regardless of what sophistication your tool has. And for that matter, we will talk about accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision, they are two, two different things. Accuracy is the ability of a measurement to describe a landscape features, true location, size or condition. Okay, Accuracy is typically described in terms of a range or variance that details a threshold within which we should or we would expect to find the likely value. So, you have a value or you have a uh, you have a range of value where that value or uh, your experimental value should come. If it is near to what we you have thought of what experimental uh, results have given then you said your value is somewhat accurate. And what about precision? It relates to the degree of specifical yeah, specificity to which a measurement is described. This can also describe the relative consistency among a set of measurements. How precise is your measurement? Sometimes it, it gives uh, this much error, sometimes it gives that much error. So, precision and accuracy are well to be understood and very important as far as this uh, natural resource through GIS is concerned. Let us take an example also. This part A shows accurate precise location of data around this circle center. This part B shows precise but not accurate these four are together right these four are also together but they are not where it, it was supposed to be while this part c shows accurate but not precise data but part d shows neither precise nor accurate data around the circle center so if we talk about circle center part a shows accurate and precise right it is it is accurate that it is lying in the center and it, it is precise also but this say this is precise okay they are they are the values are are together but they are not uh, accurate because they are not coming down to the center and this part c shows accurate they are accurate the values are quite accurate but they are not precise because accurate because they are have equidistance from the center but they are not precise because they are 
in the variety of uh, you know area that the circle uh, in which this should be it is not there and uh, party you cannot say it if it is precise not nor even it is accurate because if you take the distance from center it is again different and if you see that they are so uh, widely spread they are not they are neither precise nor accurate so this is the example of accuracy and precision so now let us start talking about digitizing so many uh, sizes from laptop or desktop uh, desktop size are available and boards have sensor that record instruction from a from a puck i'll show you the diagram and typically digitize from a hard copy medium we do it like this and we need at least four points of no location then these are transferred to a board as a series of ticks or registration points this i'll just show and puck is used to record point line or polygons so this is how it is done this is a modern digitizing table you have a, a, a gadget or you just wherever you find you just puck or click it and this data just goes through wire to your system and the other thing is you can scan the images this is so easy you need a very good quality and high page scan then aerial photography you have a camera here you can take a photograph this camera is mounted on an airplane and this is a camera uh, which is taking pictures and this is a lidar system on aircraft this is uh, lidar is uh, one technology which has gained so much acceleration in our days and this is aerial photograph this is just a satellite photograph and this is how there are two images side by side with some overlapping this is mirror stereoscope you can see a 3d out of it this is a stereo plotter you can plot it the, see two images are there you can plot it uh, digitally this is laser uh, laser range finder you can find the range of some location through this laser okay wherever you point the distance is been computed this is digital total station everything is there okay mostly used in surveying and in civil uh, engineering this is handheld data collectors you can collect the data all uh, you know uh, right long activities you can uh, compute and you can make uh, also make point line polygon vector layers also you can make so this is gps also gps is for precise location or precise positioning and time also so these there are various satellites there is a receiver and through this receiver and with the position of satellite and the time the atomic clock inside you can verify you can uh, precisely find the location where you are standing this is how gps uh, receiver and antenna are this is the gps uh, receiver and antenna together so example of multiple path error also should be taken care because these are the error which needs to be uh, you know taken care while you are computing so gps has this multiple path error that needs to be removed this is the screen play or uh, in arc info this is how your streams are being shown on a watershed this is the graphic image so we have various ja softwares also there are several major softwares are gis uh, mg microstation adaws and uh, many smaller less featured pro programs like man mac info arc view 3.2 geomedia and you can also evaluate a program which is somewhat complicated depending upon the prices the capability the com compatibility support and all those things which are uh, related but i must tell you that you must use quantum js once it's, it is a very good software open and um, you know free i am i have been using it and i am finding it very um, you know functionality enriched and i am able to solve each and every my, of my problems using quantum js you must go for it and this was uh, presented and uh, published in uh, journal of forestry it examined nine software packages costing less than dollar uh, 500 so you must go through it and i hope uh, you uh, had idea if you are a natural resource person whichever i told that you might you might start using gis for this thank you so much take care of yourself